What's the difference between an M.2 drive, regular SSD, and a hard drive? And which one should you look to buy for your next gaming PC? The answer to this question is actually really important, as the three types of storage differ significantly, in more ways than perhaps you're already aware of. In this eBuyer video, I'll be running you through the differences, a few great options in each category, and talking about just how to choose the perfect storage config for your next gaming PC. Let's do this. To answer this question best, we've picked up a few different storage drives from eBuyer to really tell apart the differences. Let's start off by looking at the M.2 category and work our way through to regular 2.5 inch SSDs and hard drives later on. Now these two drives are both NVMe M.2 drives. The one on the left hand side is a Gen 3 drive and the one on the right hand side is a Gen 4 drive. What they both have in common is they provide a real real step change in performance over the older style SATA SSDs. They plug directly into your motherboard's interface and use a standard known as PCIe. The same standard your graphics card uses making it perfect for lots of bandwidth. The only difference is the connection is a lot smaller than obviously a GPU collector, as they don't need quite so much data capacity when it comes to data transfers. Gen 3 NVMe drives will commonly deliver about 3.5 gigabytes per second of maximum read and write speeds. What that means is if you've got a 3.5 gigabyte file and a 3.5 gigabyte per second drive, it should theoretically transfer in as little as a second. If you've got a 35 gigabyte file, it will take about 10 seconds. Not all Gen 3 drives cap out at the maximum capability of the standard, as cheaper options out there might deliver two or one and a half gigabytes per second instead. This is still a massive upgrade over SATA SSDs whose limitation was 600 megabytes a second or 0.6 gigabytes per second, making them a really, really worthy storage upgrade. As Gen 3 drives improved over the years though, they quickly hit a storage limit, introducing PCIe Gen 4 for SSDs. This doubles the theoretical bandwidth available from three and a half gigabytes to seven gigabytes per second on the read and write speeds. So to be sure to consult our product pages to see what the read and write speeds are for any of the Gen 3 or Gen 4 drives we've got on offer. Increasingly nowadays, with graphics cards getting so much more powerful, fast storage is actually important, as slower drives create a bottleneck where they're actually not giving the game data to your graphics card and wider system fast enough, meaning for the latest high-end GPUs, you'll want a Gen 4 NVMe drive. Don't let size fool you though, as bigger doesn't always mean better, as we've covered on the channel before. Modern NVMe drives are actually hugely, hugely smaller than older SATA drives, and this is mainly because of the connection interface which previously took up quite a lot of room. On our modern NVMe solution, all the data is transferred through a single gold strip. Now that's not to say that an NVMe drive is simply the best thing ever and that the older or other format drives don't have their advantages. Remember I talked about that PCIe format a little bit earlier. PCIe is obviously super fast and allows for massively quick data transfers, but your motherboard is not going to come equipped with 10 or more PCIe slots. Often for your SSD, you'll get two, three, or if it's a high-end board, maybe slightly more. What that means is you can only install a maximum number of drives, and the more drives you install, the more bandwidth your system needs to actually look after them all. That's not so much a problem with two and a half inch SATA SSDs. As time's gone on and their technology has admittedly got older, they've also got a lot cheaper, meaning you can pick yourself up a four terabyte, two and a half inch drive for quite cheap and install six of them in your system at once and have no problems. Now obviously that's not completely advisable, but for future upgrades, it does mean slotting in extra two and a half inch SSDs is not only cheaper, but also much easier as you haven't got to worry about bandwidth limitations. Overall though, modern Gen 3 and Gen 4 drives are your best bet. If you're spending over £1,500 on a gaming PC, I'd pick up at least one Gen 4 drive, even if it's just for your Windows install and a few of your favourite titles. If you're spending less, you can get away with older, slower 2.5 inch drives that will obviously save you money, but you will sacrifice some performance in the process. But where does that whole thing leave the humble hard drive? A storage medium that's been around for donkey's years. Now back in the day, hard drives were like 250 or 500 megabytes maximum. Whereas now you can quite commonly pick up a 16 terabyte drive or even higher for a fairly inexpensive price tag. A hard drive is obviously the largest size form factor of the three and differs significantly to our two and a half inch and NVMe SSDs. And the reason is that these use flash storage, meaning they don't move, there's no moving components. Whereas this uses a platter of spinning disks, which get written to by little 
don't know what the name is. There's a name. We'll pop the name on screen, like a little antenna thingy, meaning they vibrate, they make a bit more noise, and they're far more delicate. If you go ahead and pick up an SSD, and I wouldn't advise you do this at home, but if you pick this up and you... But if you pick this up and you drop it, it's not going to break. I'm not even going to attempt to do that with the hard drive because I will cause some serious damage. And obviously with an M.2, there are more exposed components and you should be careful with all of your parts. But Velcroing or taping this into a gaming PC isn't going to cause a problem. Doing that on a hard drive would. Now, one thing these drives have in common is that they actually get progressively cheaper per gigabyte. Your Gen 4 and then Gen 3 drives will be most expensive for a 500 gig capacity variant. Your two and a half inch SSD will be around 30 or 40% cheaper and the hard drive even cheaper still. As you go up, the storage gets more expensive. And what that means is that actually, you probably want two of these storage mediums running in parallel. Now that might confuse you, James. I thought this video was about picking which one's best, but in truth, none of them are really best. Of course, an NVMe is the best for speed and a two and a half inch drive is the best for a balance of speed and capacity. But if you need 16 terabytes for your big video family archives, a hard drive is only ever going to be the right solution, at least until about five years time when SSDs get even cheaper still. For many system configs, I would recommend picking up a Gen 4 or Gen 3 NVMe drive and then a hard drive for your mass storage. But if you're gaming on a budget, getting a two and a half inch SSD is still going to give you significantly more performance than the old spinning platters of a hard disk drive. As I say, we'll link good options for all these drives in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, get subscribed to the eBuy channel. Thanks for tuning in. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. Oh yeah.